Hello, everyone. Matt Clark, Research Analyst with Money and Markets here with your Bull and the Bear podcast. Remember, if you do have any comments, questions, or stocks that you'd like us to take a look at, just email us at thebullandthebear at moneyandmarkets.com. Now, let's dig into uh, today's podcast. The market's been steadily moving up over the last three days after suffering a pretty steep decline. While the 2020 presidential election uh, you know, is over, that's really not what's driving the market up. It's actually news that some companies have advanced their testing or reported favorable results from a COVID-19 vaccine trial. The Dow Jones Industrial Average topped to, to, uh, dropped to around 26,500 at the end of October, but has now jumped more than 10% since, and it's been buoyed by that coronavirus vaccine news. At its current pace, the Dow could top 30,000 again, sometime maybe next week if it keeps going at this clip. Dow futures were already up 200 points on Wednesday morning when I recorded this. The vaccine news was great for investors across just about every sector. Tech was up, pharma was up, even energy stocks were up, but I think energy stocks up were probably more election related than, than COVID related. But still, I think you have to kind of factor it all in. Now today I wanna to look at one specific company that reported strong coronavirus vaccine results and tell you whether those headlines actually make it, one, make it a company that you wanna have in your portfolio. Well, let me preface by telling you that in the race for the coronavirus, the first one isn't always the best one in terms of stock to own. So it's okay to be first, but that doesn't necessarily translate in a, in a situation like this into a stock that is going to be uh, you know, a big time earnings gainer for, for investors. Over the weekend, just as national networks were calling the 2020 presidential race, one of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies announced its coronavirus vaccine trials yielded a 90% success rate. What that means is the vaccine was effective in 90% of the cases it was used in. To put a finer point on it, if the drug was used on 100 people in a test study, 90 of them reported having a subsidence of the coronavirus. In terms of medical testing, that's actually really good. Of course, you like 100%, that'd be great. But when you're testing vaccines, especially new ones, 90% is actually really pretty good. New York-based Pfizer Incorporated trades on the New York Stock Exchange on the ticker PFE, worked on a vaccine with German biotech company BioNTech SE, which trades on the NASDAQ under BNTX. Now, the stock I want to look at today is Pfizer. First, it's a relatively large company with a market cap of nearly $215 billion. It's made its name by producing cardiovascular therapies like Chantix and Eliquis, uh, along with chronic immune and inflammatory disease vaccines. Its trailing 12 months of sales is about $48.6 billion with income of about $8.7 billion. Over the last four quarters, its quarterly sales have been pretty flat. In fact, they were down slightly by about a billion dollars from Q1 of 2020 to Q2. They ticked back up around to around $12 billion in Q3. However, their one-year annual sales growth rate is actually a negative 8.28%. In terms of company earnings, Pfizer's earnings per share did go up from $1.87 per share in 2018 to 287 per share in 2019. That's about a 53% increase. But in 2020, those earnings have started to trend downward. The company reported earnings of 61 cents per share in Q1 and Q2 of this year. That dropped to 39 cents per share in Q3, or otherwise a 36% drop off. Now, in terms of its share price, during the corona crash in March of 2020, Pfizer stock fell to a low of about $20.67 per share. In the subsequent market rally, shares of Pfizer jumped 35% to around $37.44. The stock did pull back to under $32 per share in June, but then climbed up to $38.48 in August. Since then, Pfizer's been trading relatively flat between $36 and $38 a share. Now, its share price did reach a golden cross, which is, if you remember, where the 50-day moving average crosses over top of the 200-day moving average, signifying a potential uptrend in the stock. It hit that golden cross around August, September. However, that uptrend really didn't happen until recently when the company announces coronavirus vaccine test results. So that's kind of interesting to note. Another thing to note is that over the last 12 months, Pfizer stock has risen just 9% while the rest of the biopharmaceutical industry has gone up 12%. That means Pfizer is not doing any better than the rest of the industry, even with the vaccine testing news. Now, it, I ran Pfizer through chief investment strategist Adam O'Dell's six-factor green zone ranking system. The picture actually becomes pretty clear. Currently, Pfizer scores a 47 overall in the model, which indicates that we're pretty neutral on the stock. If I dig a little deeper, I can tell you the company ranks just a one on size. But of course, it's got a $250 billion market cap. 
that makes the company pretty huge. And you have to remember that larger companies tend to lag returns of equally rated smaller companies. So companies like Pfizer don't tend to have the strong returns that a, a smaller company would tend to have just because of they just don't move as much. Pfizer ranks a 33 on value, which indicates the stock right now is pretty overpriced at the moment, even with it only slightly uh, tending uh, to trend upwards. It ranks a 43 on growth, uh, meaning the stock has really not seen a lot of growth in the past. And I really don't expect it to see a lot of growth in the future either. It'll grow, but not by a significant amount. The company rates a 61 on momentum, mostly due to its sideways trading in the last few months. Now remember, our philosophy here is to buy high and to sell higher. Pfizer just hasn't shown that high yet to where I would say it's worth a buy. The stock is a solid quality stock. It scores a 72 on that metric. Its returns on investment, equity, and assets do beat the rest of the industry by a pretty wide margin. Now, Pfizer's best score is on volatility. It ranks an 89. But again, you can look at sideways trading and to see why, as to see why that is. It's not really prone to the typical ups and downs that smaller companies are. Big companies are typically like that. They don't necessarily fluctuate too often. If they go up, it's a slow and steady climb. If they go down, it's about the same. Uh, and Pfizer has is, is, is been trading sideways. So, you know, it's been less prone to those short-term market shifts. Putting all the pieces together here, I have a really difficult time recommending Pfizer for your portfolio. There's, there's barely an uptrend in the share price. It's a large company, meaning returns aren't really going to be expected to be all that great. And it's pretty overpriced at the moment, which means it's, it's really high to get into considering the rest of the market. Considering Pfizer's only about 4.5% off its 52-week high, I don't necessarily see a lot of room to grow for Pfizer, despite its latest news on the coronavirus vaccine test. However, remember, when it comes to a vaccine, there are going to be a lot of players here, not just one. I know the European Union has already ordered about 300,000 doses of Pfizer's vaccine, but that's not nearly enough to handle the entire population in the EU. The reason that is because there's going to be a lot of other companies that are going to come to market and develop a vaccine. Others already have. Eli Lilly has already, has already shown some positive uh, res results. Moderna, another, there's another company that has shown some, some solid results with coronavirus testing. Um, you know, there's a lot of them out there, and countries are going to spend money on those as well. So, you know, just because Pfizer's first, you can't necessarily expect that their sales are going to just massively explode because they were first to market. Because, honestly, they're not even a market yet. Um, they're just the first to develop uh, positive test results from it. And, you know, so, and from a stock perspective, there really isn't going to be a big winner in the coronavirus vaccine sweepstakes, let alone Pfizer. The biggest winner here is going to be us, the population, who will get dosed and be able to emerge from these coronavirus lockdowns, small businesses who will be able to uh, reopen or open more to full capacity. They're going to be the big winners in this coronavirus vaccine sweepstakes. The, the vaccine producers, they're going to gain. Don't, don't, don't kid yourself. They're going to gain, but it's probably not going to be that significant. And if it is, it's going to be very short term. So while Pfizer's news of a successful vaccine it, it test is, is great to be sure, uh, it's hardly a catalyst for me to recommend really putting it in your portfolio right now. It doesn't make it a bad company by any stretch, but the data really just doesn't support buying it, uh, buying it as a stock right now. Maybe it's a buy and hold, or maybe it's one you put on a watch list. I just don't know if it's really worth putting a, a, a full a full on investment into right now. That could change, but I don't see that changing this year. That's really about all for me today. Um, I did want to tell you that we've talked about this before, but Adam has his masterclass, uh, his Momentum Masterclass is launching. It's actually launching here either today or tomorrow. Um, in it, he explains his trading strategy that leans pretty heavily on the principle of buying high and selling higher. And it's a strategy that he actually used to retire at the age of 33. So it's one you definitely do not want to miss. If we have a link for it, I'll give it to you. If not, make sure you check moneymarkets.com and or check your inbox if you're already a subscriber to our e-letter and uh, you'll certainly get that information. I definitely encourage you to check it out. Um, you know, uh, also, you know, I'll try to leave you a link on YouTube, but like I said, if it's, if it's available, I will, if it's not, then I may have to wait until our next Bull and Bear podcast to do that. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel. Just head over to youtube.com. Make sure you search money and markets. We'll have uh, the green bull and the bear logo. Uh, make sure you click and subscribe. You'll have a little bell that comes up. Make sure you hit that and you get notified each and every time a new video uh, comes out. If you want to listen to, if you're watching this video now and you want to listen to us as a podcast, you certainly can. You can listen to us on a wide array of uh, podcast indicators like Apple Podcasts, Google, uh, Spotify, Amazon, uh, iHeartRadio. Uh, we are we run the gambit in terms of uh, podcast indicators that we're on. Make sure you subscribe there and get alerted every time a new podcast is released. Also, leave us a comment or a question or a review 
on any of those platforms. I absolutely love reading your feedback. If you have a question about a particular stock or sector, or maybe there's something you like us to look at, just email us at the bull and the bear at moneymarkets.com. We'd love to hear that. And also a reminder, make sure you head over to moneyandmarkets.com uh, to sign up for our free daily e-letter. It comes out once a day uh, and it provides you with all the content that we're working on uh, that provides you safe and sound profitable investment information that you could use uh, for your portfolio. So make, make sure you do that. Just head on over there. You just give us an email very quick, very easy, and you get one email a day from us and, and, and that's it. So uh, that, that's, that's what I have for you. Coming up on Friday, Money Markets contributor Charles Sizemore and I will sit down. We'll dive into a couple, uh, couple stocks tell you whether they're buys or whether ones you want to stay away from. I can tell you we're going to be talking about a big trend that we've seen in the market uh, and, and what that means for your portfolio. So uh, you don't want to miss all, miss that. That'll be coming out this weekend. Also, the marijuana market update, as well as our week ahead. Uh, make sure you check out all of that. Until then, this is Money Markets Research Analyst Matt Clark and the host of The Bull and the Bear wishing you all safe trading. <laughs>